right store, Bonnie. We've been seeing a lot of green, of course, on the radar all morning long. And out here on the weather patio this morning, the gardens, the lawns, they love the rain. But, you know, my lawn at home, full of crabgrass. And if yours is pretty similar, Peter Mezet from Weston Nurseries this morning is going to tell us the one most important thing you need to do to have a healthy lawn. <laughs> All right, it is September now, and Peter Mezet from Weston Nurseries. We are standing on your lawn, and I got to tell you, it looks a whole lot better than mine. <laughs> oh well, thanks. I'm actually proud of my lawn, so thank you very much. So how do you, how do people at home get their lawn to look like this? Well, I'm going to be really preachy about this because I'm a firm believer in it's all about building the soils up. If you want a nice lawn, you got to have nice soils. Okay. And then you don't have to worry about things for years to come. And this is a living testament of that. And you've said that in the past what ten years? Yeah, I put this lawn in in 2001, so almost 11 years, but more than 11 years now, and I put down a good foot. You know, most developers or contractors only leave four inches. I put down a good foot of soil. So a foot of soil. Good foot of soil, and in that, I use like a third compost mixed in with the soil, so mm -hmm. I create a real organic growing medium for the grass. All about the soil and the compost. That Show is. people what you're talking about here. So this is my lawn, which I really never fertilize. Maybe I fertilized it four or five times over those 11 years. I don't know. And look at the roots. Wow. And that's a good uh, sandy loam. So the sand, uh, the compost added in with it retains the moisture so well. So mm -hmm. during the drought, I really don't see my green, my grass go, go, go dormant or brown as quickly as my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And look how deep those roots are. Wow. So once you start off with the right good rooting environment for the grass. It creates more fibrous roots. They go deeper. You don't need to water it as much. And as root matter decays over time, it continues the nitrogen cycle. Mm -hmm. So your organic matter content is high from the get-go and some nutrients. You're going to have a successful lawn for years to come. And you said, too, you don't baby this lawn. The dog's running around on it. The kids are running around oh on it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We abuse it. And uh, <laughs> it still does, does fine. comes right back. It's very resilient. Mm -hmm. This is the compost right here that I use. It's just a simple leaf and yard trimming uh, compost, your grass, your, your leaves uh, composted down. And this is what the soil should look like where you do have some woodiness to it, some some uh, some body to it, some good physical mm -hmm. characteristics. You don't want it too clay where if you squeeze it, it doesn't break apart at all. Right. And you don't want it too sandy where it just flows through your fingers. Right. So this is the section of the yard that you've basically amended the soil the most before you put the, the seed right. in? Right. I you really did it right here. Other sections where... I didn't do it right. Right. So we can go <laughs> see the difference, right? Yeah, let's go show that. So, Cindy, here we are in my front yard yeah. where I continued to use compost most of the way. <laughs> Until you ran out. I ran out or something <laughs> happened. I don't know. Yeah. But obviously this grass that we're standing on is full of crabgrass, full of dormant grass. This looks a lot like my grass. Oh, home. sorry to hear that. Yeah. But you can see it's, it's lush and green until you get to this line here where I really kind of skimped on the soil preparation. It's not as thick and I didn't use any compost. So it, it really is all about, all this about stuff, the soil. This okay. stuff, right here. All right. right here. So it's not too late for people. If they have this sort of grass going on at home, um, what, do they, what do they do now? Because this is the time of year. Let's get going. Tur you know, turn it in with a rototiller, and this is the perfect time of year to, to seed over. You don't even need to hide your seed. You can just seed seed because the nights are cooler. Mm -hmm. And this time of year is an advantage over the spring because you get more pure grass and less competition from the crabgrass. Because it's cooler. Cooler nights, you know, yeah. now through almost the end of October. All right, so people have got some time. They do. Don't forget all about the soil, Peter. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah, all about the soil, about a good foot of it. And as he said, you've got till, you know, mid to late October. So now is the time to get that soil down and do some reseeding. Learned a lot there. Hope you did as well, Brett. We'll send it back in. Yes, and I'm